Well, hello then, Bwana Yesu Asipiwe. What a joy it is to be with you one more time. This journey has been a beautiful one because you've been coming along with us. I mean, thank you for doing this together with us. My name is Brian Mashigadi. Welcome to Harvest Conversations. And with me in studio on set, again, I have Pastor Jack yes. on this end, and I have Pastor Shad on this other end. And together, we are excited to be landing the book of Jude to the glory of God. In case you're just joining us, you will go back to the previous videos and see what we've been doing. We've been here for about, I don't know, maybe four sessions, or give or take, um, just trying to understand the book of of Jude. It's a short book, but it's really, really, really loaded, and you could get back to all of that in our previous videos. All right, share this with as many people as you can. And as we get into this, we've looked at many things. Jude is calling us to contend for the faith. We've looked at the false teachers and why we should contend for the faith, who they are, how to identify them, and many other things. And today we want to learn this just in the conclusion bit of it by looking at how do we contend for the faith. For you and for me, the 21st century believer, what are these practical steps we can take to contend? Because Jude calls us to contend for the faith. And he's told us also now, uh, towards the end of the book, how do we contend for the faith? Looks like Pastor Jack is ready to take us right into that. And so we want to invite you to join us along that as Pastor Jack answers that question. How do we contend for the faith? Yeah, thanks. Um um, we, we've, we've been through a journey. This whole thing has been so exciting. Uh, maybe, maybe just before I, I, I say that, um, again, I will say what uh, I would advise all of us to do here. If you've, been, if you've been listening all through those sessions, and you've probably heard something that um, is not in line with scripture. Uh, we, we have done our best to um, divide the word of God and to portray it in an, in an application in this generation at this time and how it is. But if we have done something that is, a, is really not scriptural, check the word out. And if what, what the word says is what you take, not really what our words are. And, and, and I know sometimes we as human beings can be a, a bit extra and all that, but check the word. Be a berean. What, whatever the word of God says, that's, that's our take. That's, and we will totally take correction, totally. And we will accept it and we will move on as dear brothers and sisters. The point of this, again, is for us to see an overview of Jude. Really, it's an overview. If, and we have not done verse by verse. Because if we do it verse by verse, we'll take like 23,000 sessions. Um, because there's so much, you know, there's so much in, in Jude. Um, now let me let, let me let me go go to the, the, the question that uh, we are handling. How do we do this? How do we um, contend? And again, I'll, I'll go to verse twenty. It's it's actually it's the theme. It's the it's a hallmark of what Jude is saying, and he says, "But you, dear friends," and of course, anytime you see the word "but," it means that something has been said, something that is not supposed to be part of what you guys are supposed to be. And now he goes and says, although this is the case, this is what you ought to do. And so he goes on and says, dear friends, build yourself up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Verse 21, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Two things I pick from verse 20. Build yourself up in our most holy faith and pray in the spirit. And um, I, I was listening to a commentary and uh, someone was saying the imperative here, the command here is to keep ourselves, it's in verse 21, the command here is to keep ourselves in God's love. It is a responsibility that the believer has. Um, the people who, and again, this, this goes to speak against what the false, the false teachers are saying. Mm -hmm. The false teachers are saying that since grace abounds, we, we, can. we can do whatever we want because, because God loves us and he can't allow you know, us to, to like go to hell. 
So we can live however, because God's love is, is, is abundant and goes beyond our... You see the verse, and I think we misquote the scripture that says, uh, where sin abounds, grace abounds the more. So we look at that scripture and we say that because grace abounds, we can continue to be in sin. But that's what Jude is speaking against, because a false teacher will eventually tell you to continue in sin. That's, his, that's the point. That's what, that's what he says. And Jude is saying, keep yourself in God's love. And I'm reminded of the words of Christ in John 15. Said, uh, I am the true vine, you are the, uh, the, the branches. If you are to um, remain in me, you ought to obey. You know, and it goes on and on and talks about, if you are to remain, you ought to obey what I'm teaching you. And Jesus says, without me, you can do, that's verse number 8, I think, or verse number 10. You can do nothing. And the command there is abide in my love. So the believer is being asked and being told, listen, if you are to contend for this faith, you are to abide. Again, I repeat, a deliberate, an intentional submission to the vine. It's, it's totally a deliberate thing that the believer has to do. And that, that, that is broken down in verse number 20. The, the, the command is to love God, and it's broken down in verse 20, number 20. Two things. Number one, grow in this most holy faith. You know, dear friends, build yourself up in this most holy faith. Like, do the work. Philippians chapter number two. The um, Bible says that work out your salvation. It's, it's a two thing. It's a two kind of response to what Christ did for us. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Then it continues to say, for it is God who wills to do. Uh, 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 we, he wills to do according to what is required of us to, to, be, to grow. You know? but, but he tells us, you work out. You, there's, there, there needs to be work into it. And that again, um, and we were talking to Shad and, and, and yourself the other day, and you were saying that um, unfortunately, there are two extreme ends of the body of Christ. There is one that loves to work it out in terms of Bible study and fishing out what God is saying. Um, there's one end of the stick that really does, it, it, it really does a lot of work to d rightly divide the word of truth. That's, that's part of it. And the second part of it is what the Pentecostal movement is really well known for. Praying in the spirit, being spiritual people, like being fervent in prayer. You know, that's, that's what I mean, many of and many of where we find where we find ourselves. That's that's what we, we do. We, we we love being in the spirit, but unfortunately, I was told this about the African church that we are a very broad church, but a very shallow church. Like we are so broad, like we reach far and wide, but when it comes to depth, atuko. You know, that's, that's, that again is, is African church. There is another extreme end, which is another kind of a church um, that is really, really uh, deep in the word of God. Really, really deep. But in terms of being spiritual and finding the things of the spirit, it's, it's lacking. So Jude emphasizes two things. To build yourself up. And building yourself up is searching the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And doing the work of, you know, getting to know who God is. And, you know, that's, that's, that's contending. But it also talks about praying in the spirit. Um, praying the Holy Spirit. And get, you know, just, just get deep. Young, young people, do keshas. Do. Go for a personal fast. I mean, like... Get deep in this thing. Like, that's how you build it. And I'm talking practical things. That's, that's how you build it. It's, it's, it's not for Pastor Moshigadi to, to call us guys for Kesha only so that we can come for Keshas and, you know, prayer retreats and all that stuff. It's for you to look at yourself and know that this thing is valuable for me. So I'm going to do it. And we find time and you dig deep. And that's, that's, how, you, that's how you contend for this faith. Again, as I finish, I'll say um, 
before we rescue. Because there's that, there's that, there's that portion that says in verse number 22. And I guess that's why before verse 22, verse 20 and 21 is very important. Before we go out and rescue either the one who is doctrinally wrong, a false teacher and all, or the, the recipient of that word, of that kind of teaching, before we rescue any of them, there's the building that we need to do, that we need to cause ourselves to be firm. We need to stabilize ourselves because... Again, as you said, you, you try and go in there and you try and correct things and you are not firm in the faith, you risk. That's, that's what it says. You risk yourself. You know? So um, I, I would say if you are to contend for the faith, build yourself up and get deep in the spirit. You know? That's what I would say. Wow. Um, such a practical truth. I love especially that you, you said the believer has a responsibility to to get to work mm. to to get the to to get to work you know many times um across scripture actually that theme is carried through like with the right at the crossing of the red sea with the children of israel uh, when they are crying out and the lord asks moses why do you cry out to me there is a, a a thing that is required for you guys to do and even if you cried out and prayed unless you guys get to actually throw yourselves out in faith then um i'm not going to teleport you across the red sea you know or with the rebuilding of the temple uh in the days of Haggai, uh with him saying um with with people just sitting around and the lord has called them to rebuild and they are not doing the assignment and even as they are crying out to god Haggai says okay go up to the mountain and chop the logs and bring them down because no amount of praying is going to substitute um, the, work the work that you're supposed to yeah. do. So we might want to sit around and, and, and cry out and cry out and read books um, concerning contending the faith. But if you're not willing to work the word of God into our lives, um, and unless we are willing to work it into our daily lives and live out the gospel of Jesus Christ practically uh, by our thoughts, by our action, by our words, by our deeds, uh, what Paul calls us um, to be an example for, um, speaking to Timothy, to be an example to other believers in yeah. faith, in speech, in love, in purity, and in conduct. Yeah, If you're not willing to work these things into our everyday ordinary life, then we are going to be missing it, is, right. is what you're saying. That's powerful. Um, all right. We, 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 we realize that, you know, a lot of us might be catching us and joined us, and maybe you've been with us since the beginning. Thank you. Been with us since the introduction, and the question on your heart is just, instead of feeling like, wow, great, I'm liberated, now I know the truth. Um, you are listening to what Pastor Jack is saying right now, and you're thinking, how am I able to undo 29, 22, 24, 20, how many years of what I've been doing right now, and it's not working? Mm -hmm. You feel like you've lost before you even, be before you even start. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're getting into um, fighting a losing battle. What would you say to someone like that, mm -hmm. uh, practically, Pastor Shad, to somebody yeah. who's feeling like, hey, manze, uh, yeah. it's very difficult it's is it tasking or taxing ni hard mm. ni, ni hard it's heavy on them yeah. what would you say to someone like that I'd, I'd tell them man now to him who's able to keep you from stumbling to the present to 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 present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, authority above all times and now and forevermore. Amen. Now to him. Friends, I'd like to tell us that we are not on this journey alone. The Bible will say in the book of Timothy that we have an anchor a sure anchor that if we commit to him, he is able to sustain us to the end. We have Jesus Christ who is the high priest who was tempted in every way and yet 
without sin. He is what will sustain us. He is what will keep us. Um, man, I was listening to Tim Keller yesterday uh, talk about the, um, um, Daniel, Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and Abednego, um, how they are thrown in the furnace. And when they're thrown in the furnace, before they're thrown in, into the furnace, they are told to worship the statue that the king creates. And they said, um, we will not worship or king that st statue because we believe that our God is able. He can. He will. But if he does not. And the most interesting thing is that when King Nebuchadnezzar looked at the furnace, he saw four people. And he says, who's that that looks like the son of the gods? I mean, listen to me. We have a God. We have a king. We have a savior that identifies with our problems. He does not snatch us out of the furnace. He is with us even in the furnace. Wow. That even in this confusion, even in this turmoil, even in this crisis of faith, he is with us. And guess what? The Bible would say that he is the firstborn. He is the head of the church. Believer, let me encourage you and tell you that Jesus Christ owns the church. The Bible says that the gates of heads shall not prevail. Oh, even if it seems like the devil is winning. Oh, even if it feels like the false teachers are carrying the day. We have a master who cares for us, who says he will sustain us. I love what it says. It says he is able to keep you from stumbling and present you blameless before the presence of his glory and with great joy. Imagine Jesus is not He's not crawling to save you. He's not been defeated so much that he's crawling to save you. No, he reigns with power. That's right. And he has saved us. Yeah. He is all powerful. The Bible would say, is his hand too short to save? It is not. So that even in the confusion, even in the things that are happening, man, if you open up your heart and tell him, Lord Jesus, take the wheel, he is able. I think a lot of times we struggle because we are doing this by ourselves. We think we are um, wise enough to navigate our way around these things. And that's the lie. We can't do it by ourselves. We need him. Day in, day out. I think something that Mosh said, um, we need to daily die. Yeah. Uh, Galatians 2.20, yeah. I'm crucified with Christ. I no longer live the life I live. It is by faith, for it is Christ who lives in me. Mm. Daily subjecting myself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Mm. Man, have you allowed him to reign? Have you allowed him to to be king over your choices? Have you relinquished the right to choose what church you will need to go to wow. or what friends you need to keep to allow him to make that decision for you? Because I think that the problem is that Christians have half-hazardly surrendered their lives. There are places in their hearts that they've guarded and thought these are decisions that I can make on my own and have not allowed Jesus Christ to touch even those areas of their lives. Mm. And that's why we are confused. That's why we have been lied to. Because we are not obeying and following the master. I would confidently submit to us today that Jesus is the standard and the guide. He is the standard. And he guides us to get there. That's why he says he will keep you from stumbling and present you blameless before the presence of his. Yeah. His. Yeah. 
glory yeah. with great joy. Mm. And it continues to say to the only God, our Savior through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Man, friends, may we find hope. Yeah. That there is, there is a Savior, an anchor mm. that keeps, it keeps, it sustains even when the winds blow, it keeps firm and steadfast. And that's Jesus Christ. Wow. Yeah, so, so, so that we can hold on him and we can trust him. Um, man, maybe just to challenge us and ask, when is the last time you believed in Jesus? When is the last time Jesus influenced your decision? When is the last time you realized that you are a slave and he's a master and you need to obey him. You need to live in such a way that portrays him as master and you as the slave. When is the last time you believed in him? Because it's, it's when we believe in him, we, we, we trust those we believe in. And I think... Mm -hmm. We have no trust in God. We have no trust in Him. Wow. Um, Jude would remind these people, but you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is not shook that there are false <laughs> preachers in our times. No. He predicted it. And like Wash said in some episode, man, you've not seen the worst. Things will get tougher. But do you know what keeps me going? Is that I have an anchor that holds firm. And that anchor is Jesus Christ. He will keep you. It's not about how much you work. It's how much you rely you see, I think the word believe is two-way. It means to have faith in and to also rely on. That's right. Have faith in God and also rely on him to sustain you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's... That's really powerful, and I don't think we would do it any justice if we added more to that. Um, I, I love the example Pastor Shad gave about Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. Um, talking about, you know, God with us, uh, reminding us from Hebrews chapter 4 that we do not have a high priest who is untouched by the feeling of our infirmity, but one who is present with us, who was tested in every way and, you know, went through it, uh, yet without sin. That's, that's somebody we are willing to trust, somebody who has been tested and has come out victorious on the other side. So I want to invite you that is listening from different locations to just throw in your weight with him. This is one you can put all your eggs in the same basket for yep. because he's worth it. He's reliable. He's, he's reliable. he's faithful and he's true. One of those qualities that um, the, the, the early church believers used to sing and talk about, like if we deny him, he will deny us. Yeah. If we you know, do all these things, but it says if we are faithless, he still he remains, remains faithful, faithful yeah. because God cannot yeah. exactly yeah. deny himself. So uh, he's, he's worth it. You can, you can trust him. You can rely on God. If you've wanted anyone to vouch for God, I don't know why you'll want that because, yeah. I mean, for human beings yeah. to vouch for God would be crazy. Maybe but, to add something. Yeah. I feel like I need to say this, yeah. that the reason why we, we can trust the faithfulness of God is because, it's because faithfulness is his nature. For God to be anything other than faithfulness, faithful is to deny himself. Yep. And the Bible says he can't deny, deny himself. himself. So that faithfulness then is his nature. Another reason why we can rely on him is because he's immutable. He does not change. Like the shifting shadows. Yeah. He, 
is constant and consistent. Amen. Another reason why I think we should rely on God mm-hmm. is because he is omnipotent. Yeah. He is all powerful. Yeah. Imagine he can. Imagine he can quench that thirst that you have in your heart of power. Because I think the reason why we are moved is because men want to see power. They want to see power exchange and encounters. Imagine he can quench that. Imagine he can quench the fears of your heart. The things that you've been told are your problems. Imagine he can sort your generational issues and the reason why you think you need deliverance every other Sunday. Imagine the Lord is all powerful. Another reason why I think you should trust him and you should trust and rely on him is because our God is all knowing. Imagine he formed you in your mother's womb and he knows the struggles that you go through. And you know what he says? He says, you can trust in him. He says he knows you. He formed you. And all the days of your life are written in the palm of his hand. You can trust him. You can rely on him. We have an anchor that keeps firm. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Shad. If you're listening in and you you would like to recommit your life or for the very first time if you'd actually like to follow Jesus Christ, I want to invite you to do that. I'm going to be asking Pastor Jack to to just make that prayer together with you um, right now. So we invite you to make this prayer full of faith, full of faith in your heart and just decide you're going to throw it all away and follow Jesus and you'll realize there was nothing worth holding on to at the very end. Pastor Jack. Wow. Thank you, Brian. Let's, let's be in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you, you who's reliable, who's trusted, you who has taken creation and has made us like you, O oh God. We come to you and uh, we want to, as we come to a close of this, ask that, Lord, you shall help us continue to contend for the faith. For we cannot do it by ourselves. We realize that we are but mere men. And we fail and we are fallen in many ways. Yet by the power of your spirit, you are able to keep us to the very end. And so, God, I I thank you. I, I really thank you because we can trust you to keep us to the very end. And right now, as, as we come to a close of this, I just want to, to make a prayer. If you hear the voice of God, and because he speaks through the servants of God, and he speaks through his word, if you are hearing the voice of God, and God is telling you, come and allow yourself to be a believer, allow yourself to be a disciple of God. If you hear that voice, I just want us to make a quick prayer. And and, and I know after we make this prayer, I know that God is going to build you up constantly, every day, every time, so that we can be able to stand to the very end. So I'm just going to ask you to repeat this prayer and say, Dear Jesus, I know that I am a sinner but I also know that you came and died so that I can be set free from sin dear God I know that where I am headed has always been condemnation and the judgment of God yet you came to set me free from the wrath that is coming to the disobedient person And so, God, today, I want to change my life. I want to turn around. I repent of my sin. And I want to ask, oh God, that you will be the Lord and the Savior of my life. 
I want to ask, O oh God, that you shall take me and make me a disciple of Jesus Christ. Father, I want to put my hope and my trust in you. I want to love you, so will you help me? And that God, I want at the very end of my life to spend eternity together with you. I'm making this sincere prayer. And I want to ask that, Lord, you shall write my name in the book of life. I thank you and I bless you for your grace. I give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And may God bless you. Amen. Amen. If you made that prayer, we want to invite you to please reach out to those numbers on your screen. We would love to walk this journey of salvation together with you. But from all of us joining the heavenly host, we just want to say welcome to the family of God. Yeah. We are so excited and so glad that in this day and age we know of a truth, Jesus saves. The Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you for being with us again as always. If you still have questions, please feel free to send them out. Let us know whatever questions you might have. We're going to get this gang again and just answer these questions um, in the very, 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 very end. Um, but allow me to finish uh, at the end of the book. It says in verse uh, 25, To the only God, our Savior, be glory and majesty and power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages and now and forevermore. The Lord bless you. See you next time. Baraka, yeah. man. Baraka.